What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. This is Alex MTV Alex and today what I have behind me is my Polygon MT Bromo N7 and what I'm gonna be doing on this video is just gonna go ahead and talk about a little bit about the specs on this bike. Before I do that, please go ahead and consider subscribing if you haven't done so, turn the notification bell on so you don't miss any future content. If you would like to support the channel, there's a link for you down in the description where you can buy me a cup of coffee. Other than that, let's do this. Okay, just real quick, before I start, I would like to let you know that, well, maybe you already know, there's two versions of the Mont Bromo. There's the N7, which is this one right here, and there's the N8. The N8 is the one I originally wanted, but the price was way off my price range. This was still expensive, that's why I had to get rid of a couple of my bikes so far. Um, let's go ahead and talk about price real quick. This one right here is $43.99, $4,399 plus taxes. That brought my total to almost $4,800. Okay, so this is not, I guess compared to a dual suspension mountain bike for a different brand, this is a low budget kind of thing, if you want to see it like that. Yes, it is still an expensive bike. Like I said, that's why I had to get rid of the other two bikes. I got rid of my uh, Axum and the Tap. That still doesn't make up for what I pay for this nowhere near close. It's probably a fourth, a little over a fourth of what I have been able to get back within those two bikes and a few of the parts that I sold from the Axum. But at least it doesn't hurt that much. I'm still keeping my, my Polygon 6 QTA which is also a dual suspension. Okay, now, this bike. By the way, I love the way this thing looks. The other one was black, it's black on the bottom and it's like gray on top. And the components there are a little bit better than this one. Now let's talk about this one. Over here, uh, we have, by the way, these are 29 inch wheels and it's a large frame. I think they only come on large frames. I mean, only 29 inch wheels. Let's see, yes, it's only 29 inch wheels. You have medium, small, medium, large, and extra large that you can get for these bikes. Um, the frame, of course, is a 6061 aluminum. We have 160 millimeters of travel on the rear suspension. And we have integrated down tube battery. So the battery is inside this down tube right here. So it's hidden and it kind of looks almost like my other bike. My CC TA, of course, this is thicker than the T8, but it's almost seamless right there. And then up front, we have a, a 160 millimeters of travel and it's a Suntour Duralox 36 RC. It's a, hundred, it's a boost fork, 110 by 15, and it's a true axle. However, it does have a quick release right here. Um, and then, if we look at the rear shock, we have a Fox shock, shock. It's a Fox Flow DPS E2E 205 by 65 millimeters. All combined with the rear suspension, we have 160 millimeters of travel at front and rear. The stem is just entity branded 35 millimeters. Uh, the handlebar is uh, 35 millimeters uh, diameter and it has a nine degree rise. Rear derailleur, let's talk about the rear real quick. We have a Shimano Dior RD M6100 1x12 and this thing does have a clutch so that's Really good. That's clutch off, clutch on. Basically, all the drive train in this thing is gonna be Shimano Dior. Then we have the drive unit. This is gonna be something new for a lot of us. The drive unit is gonna be the actual motor in here. And in this case, we have a Shimano DU E7000. And this one in particular is 60 Newton meters. I think the one on the N8 
is more than 60 newton meters so that's that's where you start seeing the comparisons of course and of course on the drive train as well then we have a battery you have a battery is a Shimano BT E8035 and it's 504 watt hours and the battery is right here that thing is heavy crank set this is something a little bit different because I, I have taken this to the trail twice and I mm, they look shorter and when I was actually thinking about it, it they are a little bit shorter this is 165 millimeter crank arms 165 millimeter crank arms and there's Samox E3 SH this is a 34 tooth chain ring it looks like a 104 BCD so I guess you can uh, actually swap this out later on if you want it for a 30, 32. I have no complaints on this one yet, so I'm gonna leave it as is right now. Basically, I'm not gonna do anything to this thing because here already it's already expensive and it has some really nice quality parts anyway. So there's no need to do anything with this. And then the pedals they come with Entity branded. I did swap those up with the ones from my accent. These are uh, I don't know, M. M Rider, something like that. I am Rider, something like that. But they're really, really nice. I love these pedals. Then uh, chain, we have a Shimano CN M6100. It's a 12-speed chain, and it came with a quick release. More on that on the next video, maybe. And you probably seen a, you are, probably have already seen shorts about the chain, so there is no surprise right there. Uh, the pedals, like I said, they're replaceable. The original ones, they're, you got them right here. They're alloy with really nice knobs right there. But I'm not using those. The, the, I have never, not even put them on. So there's no need for those. And then we have the brakes. Okay, so the brakes, we have Shimano M. T420s and they're four pistons front and rear and alongside with those we have uh, 203 millimeters rotors up front and the rear those things look <laughs> awesome then for the wheel sets we have entity branded and the wheel set is gonna be the same for the N7 and N8 they're entity XL 35 millimeters so the, the width is 35 millimeters and the difference is gonna be on the hubs. This one here has the Shimano Dior hubs, whereas the N8 has the Shimano XT. So basically, drivetrain and brakes and all the, and the hubs and everything on the N7 is gonna be Shimano Dior, and on the N8 is gonna be Shimano XT. So better components right there, even on the cassette. The tires, I think the tires are the same. We have Schwabo Magic Mary 29 by 2.6 Evo Super Gravity Attic Soft TRL. They're tubeless ready. Those things look like a monster and the tread on them is amazing. The saddle, it came with the Entity Saddle. I showed you this before. I don't like it, so I went ahead and, and bought another one on, on Amazon. And then the seat post is a then the seat post is a Transex 30.9 uh, millimeters in diameter. And that, I'm not sure about the travel on that one. Uh, it's a Transex JD YSP 23JL. I'm not sure about the travel, but it fits me perfect right there. Now, what's cool about this thing is the rear suspension. This is what they call an independent floating suspension. And the thing is right here, you have like one, two, three, four, five, six pivot points in this suspension. There's no chain, there's never gonna be a chain slap over here because the chain tube is on top of the chain, the, the chains, I mean, it's, this thing looks amazing. It's, it's, I ran it twice and it feels totally different than my, uh, my Polygon CQ T8. Even though both of them are Polygon, both of them are double suspension, these things are completely different over here in the rear. This looks very similar and the front and everything else, but this right here, and of course the motor and the drive tray is gonna be totally different. This makes for a super, super smooth 
ride. Let's see what else can we talk about this bike. The geometry, let's look at the geometry. By the way, the MT Bromo N8, the price difference, okay, that this one was $4,400 plus taxes, about, uh, like I said, $4,800 with taxes and everything. The MT Bromo is $6,000 plus taxes, so six times eight is 48. So you're gonna end up paying about $6,500 for the N8. Yes, the components are there. They make up the difference. Instead of the front fork, you're gonna have a Fox 38 performance. And then uh, on the rear, you're gonna have a Flux, Fox Float X2 uh, with two position adjustment. By the way, this one has um, three position adjustments right here. And like I said, the group set is XT compared to the OR. And everything, like the, the tires are gonna be the same. Now let's look at the geometry. All across the different sizes, the head tube angle is 64.5 degrees right there, and the seat tube angle is 70 degrees across everything right there. The seat tube length is gonna be for this one 420, so it goes from 400, 410, 420, and 430. Seat tube length. This one is 420 because it's a large. The head tube length is 100, 105, this one is 110, and then 120, depending small, medium, large, extra large. Uh, effective top tube length for this one is 637. Let me tell you which one that is. Top tube length. So the distance from, I guess, the middle right here to this right here. Is gonna be 637 bottom bracket height is gonna be 35 it says 35 no that's the bottom bracket drop bottom bracket drop is 35 bottom bracket 5 is 345 millimeters the frame stack is 635 standover height is the same all across 710 handlebar width no wonder I thought these were uh, 800 millimeters, just like my T8, but no, they're actually 780s. They feel a little more like the Axum. Uh, stem length, of 35 all across. We talked about that one. Um, and dropper post travel, okay, this is what I was looking for. The dropper post travel for this one is 170 millimeters for the large and extra large, and 150 for the small and medium. Of course, the warranty, you have like five years on the frame and one year on parts according to manufacturing, just like any other polygon. I might make a little video about my experiences on the warranty and this kind of thing, and then go from there. So, there you have it. These are all the specs on this thing right here. I have a video on, um, kind of like behind, where I wrote this and compared to my Polygon Cisco T8 to compare the times. And just FYI, I wanna throw this out there for all the e-biker haters out there because I know there's a lot of them. I used to be one of them, but all of you who think riding an e-bike is easier, not necessarily, because I have the experience on hardtails, double suspension, and now on an e-bike. And the difference is not that much because you're actually putting in a full workout on this thing because this thing is heavy. This thing is 56, yes, 56.92 pounds. This thing is freaking heavy. It's not a light bike. So you can actually feel it all the way here. You can actually feel your upper body working out as well. And I can talk about more about that on a on a future video whenever I do kind of like a comparison and yes this is not gonna be an e-bike channel because what I'm mostly gonna be doing just like before is just gonna be talking about the parts and everything else like maintenance tips tricks and everything that I've been doing so far um, the fact that I have an uh, e-bike now is just for me to make longer rides 
and explore other areas where I've never been before. Like, for instance, if I go to a different trail that I have never been before, I can explore more and not limit myself on my physical condition. And, uh, but other than that, my local trail, I'm still gonna be using my, my regular CISQ T8. I'm, like, eh, I'm just gonna call, I'm just gonna be using my bike. This is the, I'm just going to call this my e-bike and the other one my bike. I'm just going to be using my bike for my local trail. And uh, I have nothing against... When I, well, this is a little bit something. When I used to see this guy with an e-bike on the, my local trail, I'm like, really, dude? That's why you put in like 10 miles when... You, I, I usually put in 10 miles as well, but like... Uh, and, and, and now I can see that... I can feel what he's feeling, and yes, don't don't just hate just because it's an e-bike is is something, and trust me, it's fun. It is fun. Uh, I guess that is gonna be it for this one, guys. If you like this video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and consider doing so, and turn the notification bell on so you don't miss any future content. If you want to support this channel, there's a link for you down in the description. I'm over 850 subscribers right now. We're getting close to the 1K. Other than that, that's going to be it for this one. And I'll see you on the trails. Goodbye.